Hello everybody, thanks for watching The Skinny and welcome to today's video. I'm going to be going over the basic parameters um, to get your machine up and going so that you can get your machine doing this. As soon as possible. So this is going to be pretty dry to go through. Um, bear with me here, but we're just going to get through the Acorn Wizard as quickly as possible. That way you can see the menus and all the different inputs and output options that they already have pre-configured for you and get on through it. So first up, I got the machine powered up. Haven't done anything yet, just to start off. Um, if you read up here, it says press cycle start to start job. Now usually it asks you to hit the emergency stop button first thing. So if we did go down here to cycle start, um, it would say fault job canceled. So what you need to do is just hit the reset button, reset cleared, and try it again. And the machine's going to go ahead and go into the home position. Once that does, you'll see the zeros populate here, and the machine will know that it's at the zero point. Um, not necessarily for the part that you're making, but for where the table location is, it knows it's all the way at the end. So as soon as this done, which is going to take a minute because I didn't park it before I shut it down last night, so it's going to slow jog everything into position. Then we'll get into the acorn wizard here. I guess while this is going on, one thing I will say is when you're configuring your stepper motor drivers, um, you're going to need a dial indicator or some good way of measuring your table travel here so that when you program it to move one inch, it moves an inch. And then when you program it to move back the other way an inch, it goes back to zero. Um, the difference between going forward and coming back and having not landing on the same spot, that's going to be because of any backlash you've got in the system. And if you're only going one direction, you go that direction again, it's not moving as much. You might have to change your actual signals. Um, we'll go over that when we get to that part of the stepper motor parameters. So this should be getting about done. All right. So um, it has my part locations saved in here. So even though it's on all of the, the limit switches, this is where I left off after making parts yesterday, or actually I should say this is how the distance from where my fixture was. Let's go ahead and get into it. F7 here for utility. F10 for Acorn Wizard. All right, the fun part here. I'm just gonna get through this as quick as possible here. Um, this was, uh, I covered this in the previous video. This is your basic your very basic setup when you're doing your first bench test. Um, I guess not your first bench test, but your basic hookups. So I'm using the Gecko G201 G201 schematic, and that's just a, a basic machine layout for your outputs and your inputs. It was all compatible with my system, so that's the one that I used. Doesn't really matter because you're gonna probably end up reconfiguring it. Everything you see here, you're gonna be uh, given options to change later. So go down here to input definitions. Um, you'll see right here, you got a drop down list of all your different inputs for a milling machine. Um, there they are. If you wanna pause this and just check through those, see what all you get. Other options here. Yeah, you got home limit. Yeah, all your, all your basics there. So here you've got normally open and normally closed is your light or your green and red options. So these are normally open switches, my limit and my homes, and a normally closed switch on the emergency stop okay. All right, so next we have output definitions. Here's that drop down menu. And this one. So we're working on a mill, keep it, keep to it here. Output one I'm using for my oil pump and output four and five I'm using for the spindle controls. Now we get down to axis here. This is where you're gonna tune your motors. So I've got mine all set for, uh, I think it's 10 step, 10 micro steps. 
So 10 times the 200 steps that it takes to make one turn on the stepper motor puts me at 2,000. Um, after fine tuning it with the dial indicators and, and getting it where it was actually true, it ended up being 2020 fairly consistency, consistently, except for on my rotary head. It, it wasn't requiring any adjustment there. Next you have your lead screw. Um, mine is a five pitch, so five rotations of the screw is one inch of travel. Um, and then as far as my rotary head, it was a quarter of a rotation ended up being a degree. Here we have the lash compensation, so your backlash. Um, any slop that you've got in your machines, this is where you can program in for it. So um, again, one of those things where you're going to take your time, you move forward an inch, you move backwards an inch, and you find out what the difference was between the two, and that's your backlash. Here's your, let's see, max rate. This is your, your speed limit for when you're going fast. Um, when you're cutting, this is your speed limit for when you're going fast and jogging. This is your slow jog and your acceleration time. Whether you need to reverse the directions as far as positive or negative if your table's traveling the wrong way. And uh, some other stuff, I didn't, I didn't make any changes here. This was all default. All you do is really, really worry about these top two. Um, backlash, if it's a problem, you're going to want to adjust, set that in. Um, otherwise, I didn't adjust, I, I don't think I adjusted any of those. I might have put the 50 in there. I don't know. So moving on, access homing. All right, so initially, you're probably going to want to have your your wizard to generate your automatic home program. Now, in the case on my machine, I don't have a, a limit or a home switch on my indexing head. So I let it generate it, then I deleted a line from that, that program that it wrote, and then highlighted the option not to overwrite it anymore. Because every time you go write settings to CNC control configuration, it's gonna automatically rewrite your parking and your home programs um, just by default, unless you, you take those marks, you know, you, you highlight these not to change it. So I do have it automatic homing, so that it goes on down there as you saw earlier. And here's another place where you can change, well, this isn't another place to change direction, but you change which side of the table to travel to for your home switch. So I like the table all the way out here where I can work on it. Um, bringing the table all the way out to one side just makes putting your work on it a lot easier. Um, it's not the way everyone does it. Some people tuck it all the way into the machine for the home position. Uh, it's up to you, however you work, whatever works best for you. Um, another one that you're going to want to pay close attention to is your homing sequence. Um, generally speaking, you want your Z axis to go up and get out of the way before the table starts moving, just in case your drill bit's sitting down there and the vice goes by and smears it off for you. I'm not saying that out of experience at all. Um, so yeah, always home your Z first, in my opinion. Then maybe your X or Y doesn't doesn't really matter for those two. But again, if you've got something in the way, home one before the other. And then if you've got another fourth axis that needs to be home, you can you can put that in there. And then you've got your software travel limits, so that you don't go all the way to the limit switch to trigger a fault. It it'll trigger before you get there. Probably a good idea to set those up. Um, axis pairing, next menu here. This is if you have a slave axis. Say you're on an email like this and you want to raise the table and lower the quill by CNC control, then you'd have basically two motors running on the same axis. So you'd have a master and a slave. You could set that all up there. I don't have that set up, so we're not getting into it. An advanced, I didn't mess with anything here. But again, you can you can change your signals. So if you need them to go positive or negative, to go forward or reverse, you can you got another place you can change it there, and change uh, timing stuff like that. I'm not doing any of this. Um, I didn't do anything onto the spindle box here either. Um, this would be if you had an encoder. I don't. This would be again rigid tapping, but you have to have an encoder, so I don't. And if you're 
using like a servo or something for your spindle, you'd probably set up PWM signals for it. I'm using a variable frequency driver, so it uses an old analog signal. Not So I didn't mess with that. I don't have a touch probe, but you've got a drop down box here you can take a look at. Three different options, four different options. Then tool touch off, you got another, I think, three or four options here. Four options. Control peripheral, we've got input devices. All right, so touch screen. If you've got a touch screen monitor, you'd highlight that one. If you've got their USB control pendant, you'd, you'd click it there, which one. And I'm using the virtual control panel, which is just the little panel here off to the side in the main, in the main control software. Wireless MPG, I wish I had one, but I don't. Uh, let's take a look at what their drop downs look like. All right. Preferences, CNC control. Don't have password. Distance to go, that's when you're running. It just lets you know how much further till it changes direction, I guess. Display machine coordinates, yes. See, active GNM codes just lets you know what the machine's doing, yeah. So you got a few little just custom to use settings here. I think the only thing I messed with was I turned the keyboard jogging on. And then I, I at one point had the display the legend just to get familiar with it. But that pops up right in the middle of the screen. So you look at it and then you end up closing it anyways. That one was all pretty basic. Wizard. Um, don't change. I didn't change anything here. Auxiliary keys. I didn't do anything here. And lube pump. I did use this. So I've got it direct control. So run the machine for 30 minutes. Give the pump power for 15 seconds. Um, sounded good. All right. Then you just go down here and write. Um, I didn't do anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and sit and hit no, but otherwise it would write it and it'd tell you to either restart the CNC 12 software for the changes to take effect, or it'd tell you to power cycle and recite or restart. So those would be the two things that go up there. Now, I'm just gonna close out of this and shut down real quick um, the software. And then I've already created a shortcut here to the cncm.hom file that's in the, the main Centroid folder. And this is the home sequence. So on here, because I didn't have that um, limit switch, right here, you can see the, the pattern. We got M92, Z, M26, Z, M92, X, M26, X, M92, Y, M26, Y. Now you can see that's my homing sequence. Go ahead and home Z, home X, home Y. Now, when we get down to A, we don't have that M92 there. That's the line that I deleted because there is no limit one here. I don't have the limit switch, so I deleted that line, and it can go ahead and consider A at home. And then I went ahead and saved that. Make sure I uh, thank you, Marty, from Marty CNC Garage, uh, showing me, telling me that that box existed so that it stopped rewriting my home program every time. So that. That's why I had the shortcut on the desktop was because literally every time I'd write something, I'd have to go back in and, and edit that. So that covers the basic input and output. Thanks for sitting through the content. I'm definitely uh, glad that's over. So we'll move on to more exciting stuff here coming up pretty soon. Like the uh, motor plate that I made that turned out pretty good. So I use a quarter inch end mill to cut some 3 8 motor slots for a Predator 212. And uh, let's strap a motor to that and see how fast it'll go in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you, uh, if you like, I shouldn't say if you like what you saw because this was some boring stuff. But if you value the resource, please hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications and uh, consider me an added resource and feel free to leave any comments if there's something that i can do here to give you a hand i'm here all right so uh if any of you got any good luck wishes for the skinny i could sure use them right now
See what we got. Ooh, didn't quite get it on. Alright. Almost. I guess I could have programmed it to go a little bit deeper. And uh, if I had it supported in here better, clamped down better, it wouldn't be bowed up so much in the middle here. But the end mill, the used end mill did survive. Let's see if it'll focus in on it. <laughs> 